Typical of the physical training in our schools is this display at the Wellington East Girls College. And typical too are these healthy young New Zealanders in action. The girls like this part of their schoolwork, and the instructress has no difficulty in keeping them up to the mark. Nowadays, the old physical jerks idea is going by the board in favor of rhythm and freedom of movement, which are the keynotes of these exercises. Spectators today include His Excellency the Governor General and Lady Newell, here to present a Navy League flag to the school. The girls top off with exercises that make attractive picture patterns. However, the real value of this work in our schools is not in pretty pictures, but in the training that is building up strong and healthy young people for the future. An EPS organization was able to put its training to good account recently when it helped to shift a hospital from Otaki to Silverstream near Wellington. A large convoy of vans and private cars one Sunday morning drove to the children's health camp at Otaki Beach. Another hospital had become available and everybody was to be shifted. EPS emergency ambulances, which are tradesmen's vans fitted to take stretchers, accommodated the stretcher cases and a large fleet of private cars took the walking cases. Members of the St. John Ambulance, nurses and drivers, all helped to put the patients aboard. Traffic officers and St. John Ambulance officials directed vehicle movement from a car fitted with a loudspeaker. At last, everyone was aboard. There were final farewells, and the convoy moved off. Towards the end of the journey, patients got first glimpses of their new home, a modern, well-equipped hospital set on a rise. It has a view, plenty of sunshine, and lots of room. Long before the convoy set out, it had been decided where each patient was to go. The shift went smoothly, thanks to good organization. The government seed testing station is at Palmerston North. Its job is to save farmers from sowing poor seed, and it's responsible for fixing the value of all seed dealt with in the wholesale and export trades. With each sample, the first thing is to divide the seed into test lots in a machine which ensures that it remains evenly mixed. Each sample is accurately weighed out on a precision balance. This sample is of a grass seed, crested dog's tail. After weighing, each sample is hand sorted for impurities. This is rye grass seed, and this linen flax. Broken seeds as well as impurities have to be counted, and the weeds present must be recognized, so the girls need much skill and training. For germination, seeds are usually set out on damp blotting paper. In the case of round seeds like turnip, rape and radish, a small gadget can be used to set them out neatly in batches of a hundred. Peas and lupins are germinated in glass jars. For germination, the seeds have to be kept warm and damp in special cabinets, similar in design to those used in seed testing stations all over the world. In a few days, the seedlings are sufficiently grown, and then there comes the counting off of the percentage of healthy seedlings, a job requiring skillful judgment. Here, green heads of ryegrass are being examined to see if they're healthy enough to be worth harvesting for seed. If not, the farmer can feed the paddock off to stock. Here's another special laboratory service. A sample of wheat from a standing crop is being ground up and weighed to see if it's ripe enough for the header harvester.
The ground up sample is dried in a small oven at standard temperature and cooled in a dry place before weighing again. This is a very rapid and useful determination of the ripeness of grain. For determining strains of seeds, in some cases chemical differences have been discovered. Here, white clover seedlings are going into test tubes for a chemical test for the high producing type. A fluorescence test is regularly used to eliminate annual strains from perennial ryegrass. Ryegrass seedlings from the germinator are placed under the ultraviolet light, where seedlings of annual type are distinguished by fluorescent light round the root. This fluorescence test has much to do with the quality of millions of acres of sown pastures, both in New Zealand and overseas. Upon the work of the seed testing station depends the quality of innumerable crops throughout the Dominion. And the reputation of seed for export, now worth over a million a year, also depends very much upon the girls at Palmerston North, who between them examine annually some 30,000 samples of seeds.